Got my backwards, backwards today. today. Shit. Or what if you went gangster than a motherfucker? Gangster than a motherfucker. What's good, YouTube? Navy Boy 92 here, back again, once again. And today, people, today, we are back for episode two, week number two of Black History Month for WAFB. I am, of course, joined by my co host, J Nuck, and uh, Light Skin Almost Win Twit Twit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you yeah. say episode two? Yeah, I was like, I'm sitting here like... It's episode two of Black History Month. Okay, okay. okay. I'm like, uh... Get it together, black people. Get it together. (laughs) Get it together, black people. What's going on, guys? Apparently, I'm light-skinned. What did you say? Almost win or something like that? (laughs) Whatever. Whatever. (laughs) Y'all go ahead. Wait a minute. Jay's lighter skin than I am. Fuck you, Nappy. (laughs) It just went what we were talking about. (laughs) Whatever, man. (laughs) Anyways, y'all already heard our our guest for this week. It is the one and only uh, Big Snacks. And he smell like ass, too. That's all right. (laughs) He ain't fresh. (laughs) I'm blacker than you, motherfucker. He ain't fresh. (laughs) (laughs) I'm the official member of Black History Month because all you motherfuckers light skinned. (laughs) <laughs> Ice Kid Nick's making a comeback Hold on Whatever <laughs> Hallelujah to that Jay Hold on Anyways. Twitch you, We gotta check your references You might not even be black We gonna check on you Oh here we go Here we go <laughs> Twitch, Twitch, Go ahead check these references real quick yeah, You don't even count We gotta check on you man Well we got It's me and Jay So technically we're one black person. We see we know We know Jay is half black We already know Why that. cause he can rap I can rap <laughs> I know you heard my rap. You ain't got no neck. Nah, you ain't got no neck. I cut it off. Oh! <laughs> Yo, you was loving that shit too. Wanted to sign me to y'all stream mix. And I was like, Yo, calm down. You know, let my Jay, let my boy Jay take care of that. You know, I don't want to like come over and just take over the whole scene. You know what I'm saying? So I just, I'm doing my own thing. What? The whole scene. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. We feel you. We feel you. Good. See? Anyways, anyways. Accepted in the black community. Thank you, Pops. <laughs> These black people, oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> we get the damn show uh, on the road messing with the almost, <laughs> the almost anyway, black the, guy. The, uh, the, the main thing, the main thing I want I wanted to bring up, the one thing I want to talk about, I was meaning to bring this up on last week's podcast, but we kind of ran out of time. Because uh, last week we were talking about um, video games that are coming out this year and all that shit, and Cool was talking about how he was looking forward to Last of Us and all that stuff. Um, but the, it's, it's an issue that's come up a lot in the media nowadays is. Um, how how all these gun laws and all these 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 this talk about influence for gun laws going around and and a big thing is video games and the influence it has on I don't want to say just <clears throat> kids or teenagers or just people in general. A lot of people are pointing the finger at video games, and I don't know if y'all know, but uh, Vice President Biden sat down with like. Um, Activision or some other game developers mm-hmm. and they had some big old conference meeting about it and in my opinion I think it's a bunch of bullshit I did you also hear or read a thing about uh, I don't remember who it was um, they're trying to pa- they were trying to pass a law that you had to pay like extra taxes on M rated games and then like those taxes from the M- the extra taxes like extra three dollar tax on M rated games would go around and be put back into like mental health hospitals and stuff like that. Yeah, but who I was like that. The, the question is who's really gonna get that money? Every That's time what I was you I, add I think, some extra, the money never goes where it's supposed to go. It always yeah, ends up yeah. in some fat cat's pocket and him buying a new fucking jet or a new house. <laughs> Or some shit. I'm tired of paying for other people. I think shit. it's, I think it's retarded that they're trying to like solely like single out video games as the as the problem with like people that already have issues. Like, well, it's it's not know. it's not that they're like zoning in solely on video games. It's it's more so of a, like a media aspect, and video games just happens to fall in that category of media. And it's just, it's such an easy thing to just blame because you know what I mean. It's like if when you, when you were a kid and you got bad grades, what'd your parents say? Stop playing them damn Stop video playing games. games watch yeah. the TV. It, it always goes down to fucking video games. And it's like video games, I got shit to do with it. I got that's bad games. I don't know how to that's what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I hate it, man. I always hated that shit, too. Just like everybody tries <clears throat> to blame video games for like the most retarded shit, but like. You can turn around and be like, oh, well, you're never going to be successful, you know, playing these video games and all this stuff all the time. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, look at these companies that are making loads of money off of video games. Like, obviously, they were successful with this shit. Like, I, I don't know. They're just to bring I it mean, down to, like, I mean, but it had to stem from like, somewhere. 
like I think the shoe might fit some cases, but I think the the problem lies in where they try to generalize it. You know what I mean? Right, and I mean I can understand like a crazy person like that was already on edge already, and like oh let's go, you know their parents or they get their hands on a Call of Duty game. It's just gonna be like hey they I can play with guns in this game. Well, I can play with guns in real life. The game isn't what made him crazy. That made him say hey I can already play with guns. He was already crazy before he got the game. Like. I and mean, he was already that. playing with guns before he got the game too. That's what I'm you know, saying. But, like obviously but he had a gun. <laughs> you can't you can't throw a whole society of people that play video games in and, and group them up into a bunch of crazy people. You know, right. exactly. everybody everybody that plays video <clears throat> games don't play with guns, and everybody that plays with guns don't play with video games. There's a lot of freaking mm-hmm. gun nuts out there, and I'm one of them. You know, I have a ton. I have lots of guns, and. I've always had lots of guns, you know. <laughs> but you say, shit. Come fuck with me, I dare you. <laughs> but I mean, but I'm like, saying like though, the, you can't um... you can't throw a group of people that group of kids or teenagers or young adults, however the hell you want to put it, you can't throw them group put them in a group of people. Say all these people are nuts because they play video games. There are mm-hmm. several tons of different video <laughs> games out there for people to play. You just can't say Call of Duty made me do this. Battlefield exactly. made me do this. Crisis made me do this. No, you already going to do it before you play that video game. You already nuts. You know, I mean, and it's like that um that uh that the most recent shooting. I don't know if they if they caught the guy or not yet in LA, the the ex police officer, the military guy. Like last I heard last night there was this giant manhunt for him. Like they found his car burned out in some ski resort or something. And I mean, it's like <coughs> that dude was in the military for years. He was a police officer. Yeah, I mean it's it's not like it's not like I can say like he never played video games, but I got a strong feeling homeboy in the military and and he's a police officer every day. He's not going to no midnight release trying to pick up the next one. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> on that and note, if he though, is, why is he trying to protect us anyway? He got other shit obviously <laughs> on his mind. Damn. On that, that note, like. though, I mean, I guess it's kind of a double edged sword. It's almost a catch twenty two. Where I think, because uh, you, you, you lumped it all into media in general, correct? I mean, video games is just one of the things. Um, <clears throat> the media is kind of what, what hurts it. I mean, they almost glorify, not really glorify, but they um, <clears throat> give these people the attention they're seeking. And you have to report the news. I'm not saying don't report the news, but I feel like that's the thing that drives people um, over the edge like I mean I, I feel like they feel like they're going to get their five minutes of fame because can you name the, the kids that were shot in Connecticut no but can you tell me who the gunman was probably so mm-hmm. and I think I think they listen they, they see that and I think that more than video games is is what is the driving force behind it all to be honest but what can you do because you have to report the news right. and as society <clears throat> as our nation grows in technology I mean <clears throat> we're going to hear about this stuff via the internet because everybody has the internet. You're going to hear it. Uh, you know, you got your smartphones. You could pick up the internet from there. Whatever you're going to, you're going to have access to all these stories. So, you know, I, I, to me, that's more of a driving force than video games will ever be. I mean, but, video but games, video games. That's the sad part of the world we live in today. Drama and sex sells more than. Good stories or well, I don't have a problem with the sex. Stories. I mean, no, um, <laughs> I hope not. They might be twit might have a problem with the sex, but <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, man, drama and sex sell, and and that's the thing. People always want to report on what's going wrong instead of what's good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and that's the driving force of our industry today. <clears throat> and I say our industry, meaning the media. You know, and people. People gravitate toward bad things. They always want to know what bad happened. Not what good happened, what good came out of this or what's the good part of the story. Just tell me the bullshit. Who got killed? (laughs) Who did what? Who smoked all the dope? Who sold all the drugs? Who killed this person? How many dudes she fucking? That's what people want to know. They don't want to know if the motherfucker went to school were they a good student? Were they were they raised in a good home? Nobody cares about all that. Just tell me all the bad shit that happened, and I can go on about my day. You know, and, you know, it's it's it's. Uh, we were talking about yeah, like like how drama and sex sells, and also I think it's the way that the media promotes it. 
Because it's not just not just the fact that it's drama. It's not just the fact that it may be sex, but the way they promote it. I mean, a good example that, that I've always thought of, and a lot of people have frowned on me for this, but I mean, in no way am I saying that 9-11 was a problem, that we shouldn't support it or anything. But it's like, they don't do it so much anymore, but like the years after 9-11, like they would, I remember like NBC News would start to promote like their, their 9-11 Remembrance Day or whatever, like in the middle of August. They, they like, do like, it now. Yeah, like why? Why are we? Why do you do that? Like, I understand. Like, it's 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 drama, and that's all it is. But I mean, it's like there's other things that we can report on. We don't need to spend two weeks covering and and recapping everything that happened ten, eleven, twelve years ago. Yeah. But then at the same time, you know, we can sit here and say, why we celebrate Black History Month every single year? <laughs> why? Well, I, I mean, has the has well, the nation we're not, ever really we're not suffered? Remembering, we're not remembering. In Black History Month, it's not celebrating drama. It's celebrating what people done, the efforts and the achievements that they did. You know, it's celebrating all the good. There's nothing negative that comes out of Black History Month. You know, some idiot will always bring a negative into Black History Month, but Black History Month is meant to celebrate all the good that African Americans or black people have done for the world, not just for each other, for everybody. You know, it's... And why we got the shortest damn month of the year anyway? <laughs> why, why brother got 28 days? Why we can't get 30? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just bullshit. But, but yeah, you know, that's, that's what it's supposed to be about. But, you know, some idiot will always... Twit, you can't you can't say nothing about that because you ain't we we. All right, now you. look, now look. When we now confirm look. you, then you can speak now. on me. Look, I, I thought we I thought I was accepting into the black community at the beginning of the podcast. I'm already kicked out. Y'all voted me off the island that quick? We not even shit. Y'all take y'all 28 in. days. I got fucking 11 more months anyway of being white. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 11 more months of being white. <laughs> wow. I'm not going to even touch that one. <laughs> I'm not going to touch it. Anyways, anyways, speaking of Black History Month. Wow. We have snacks on the podcast and and it's it's I don't know if you would agree with this next or not, because this isn't really a title that you can give yourself. But I would go ahead and say that on the YouTube scene in our community, you are one of the most influential African Americans. I can say I'm one of the most hated African Americans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about then you fit right in. <laughs> I don't know about influential. I hope. I hope what I do inspires people. I try to bring out the good and everything, man. It's it's. I, I try to use my platform to promote and and keep people aware and just I like happiness, man. People always want to be sad and bitch and moan. I don't be happy about something every day, man. It's I watch Twitter and there's people just beefing and and arguing and man, why why ain't nobody ever happy? Why? What what what's so bad? You hear, you know. You woke up this I morning. woke up. Right. And that's that's all I can ask for. Everything else is on me. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? How my day turns out is on me. You know, and I try my best to be happy when I go to bed. <laughs> you know, and I look at all this bitch. I'm like, y'all crazy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all see me all day, man. I joke and bullshit on Twitter and it's it's all fun, man. It's I love my job. I love what I do. I love my company. I love my network and everything about it. But at the end of the day, man, I can't ask for nothing but roll over and kiss my wife and thank God for everything that I have and pray that he wakes me up in the morning to do it all over again. You know, it's it's a blessing to be in the position that I'm in, and I hope I inspired somebody every day to keep pushing because two years ago, wasn't my be- wasn't, it wasn't in my plan to be sitting in this seat, you know, Sitting in the position I'm sitting in, but hey, everything happens for a reason, and I take this challenge diligently and do the best I can with what I got. You yeah, know, we do what we do. <laughs> God, DB, we had a Ray Lewis moment on yeah. for a second. I was ready to go play the Super Bowl after that speech. <laughs> Boy, y'all crazy man. Damn. So, so um, being, uh, you know. On the on the topic of Yaush as well, um, what's what's new? What's what's Yaush bringing that's that's new coming uh, oh. to the table? Oh man, we got we got some crazy stuff that we're working on. I know 
And we got some tournaments coming up this year. We're working on some of those. Some card tournaments and maybe some FIFA. Hopefully. And if Crisis works out, it might be some Crisis joints. You know. I've been digging that game lately. I want to see I want to see what the mainstay is and how people get into it because the beta has truly got me hyped. Nappy's you know. a crisis hater, so. <sighs> no, I, I hate on Nappy crisis doesn't. just like I hate on Battlefield. I really don't give two shits about the game, but well, I won't say I won't say Cod crisis. Fanboy. I won't say I won't say you already know that's a lie. You already know that's a lie. Um, I won't say I I say I like Crisis better than Battlefield. Um, I don't really hate on either one of the games. Uh, my whole little Battlefield campaign, like this time last year, whenever it was, <laughs> was only because Battlefield has some of the most sensitive fanboys ever. If you put the word bad and Battlefield in the same sentence, I could say Call of Duty is bad, Battlefield is better, and they will flip out on you. <laughs> I swear to God. And that's, that's really the only reason I did it. I just did to fuck with people. But I, mean, I bought the game. I bought the fucking game. So, so you're going to get Crisis 3 as well? Hell no. He's yeah. a God fanboy. Because yeah. I was going to say, boy. you were like, no, I don't, I don't I hate bought, it. And I, I was going to say, go I watch played, the last podcast and see what he said about Crisis. Mm-hmm. I played mm-hmm. I played um, Crisis 2. And I did not like it at this all. This nigga played Crisis 2 for an hour and a half. I, no, I didn't, dude. Have this you played the multiplayer? Have you played the Crisis 3 beta, though, Nick? PlayStation 2, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 days when me, Country, and a couple other people got on there and played it when it first came out. Yo, I used to play with you on the beta on Xbox. You know, because I never played the beta on Xbox. Have you played the Crisis 3 beta? (laughs) (laughs) It's a question. Have you played the Crisis 3 beta? I haven't. I haven't. You I need, can't say that I have. It's but on, I mean, but I mean, it's it's. Yeah, it's I, 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 you can't. You can't. Sour taste in my mouth. You can't. Pops is talking. You can't judge that game. <laughs> this game off of that one though. I'll play it. I'm, my expectations aren't that high though. Is it he now? Like, other than COD, that's the only game you can judge off the previous one. But this one, you can't judge off the last one because it's it's on a better engine, and it it plays smooth. I played. I played Crisis 2 a little bit, but this one I really like. I like the multiplayer. I ain't, I ain't, I don't know about the campaign and all that, but the multiplayer, it feels good. It runs good. So if it, if the full version plays like the beta, that bitch is going to be on point. <laughs> it is. And that's the game that I'm looking forward to to come out too. Crisis, Jake. I told you that in the last in the last one. Remember, you were like, "What game are you looking forward to, Jay?" And I said, "Well, I was looking forward to GTA, but after I seen the video about Crisis Three on JG's video, it looked interesting. So I'm looking forward to that." Look, Jay. Now, anytime say something anybody else. says oh, anything okay, other than okay, Call yeah. of Duty, we're like, "Hey, like you like this game?" Nappy's head is just going, "I love Call I like of Duty." How, I, love I Call like of how Tweet is Call trying to pull the exact same <laughs> joke I used on him last week. That's so awesome. I love that. That's oh awesome. God, you Call of Duty fanboy. That's, mm-hmm. that's typical twit twit. Typical twit twit. Yo, I'm done. <laughs> Podcast is over. It's over. So done. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, anyways, um, you mentioned earlier snacks. You were one of the most hated African Americans <laughs> in the community. Um, I think that's objective. Um. But to that to that extent, you know, this is Black History Month, and Cool got deep on us last week. Is there any uh, experiences or, or anything, any 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 message or whatever you could get across? Not necessarily just through Yaush or, or or the internet, just any anything in real life. Like he got real deep last night, uh, last night, last week, talking about uh, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and all that stuff. So, man, y'all gotta realize where I'm from. First of all. <laughs> I'm from Alabama, so I'm I'm in I'm in <laughs> I'm in the pits of hell when it comes to racism. You know, <laughs> it, it gets it gets pretty much no worse than it gets down here. You know, not not saying that Alabama's a bad state, and I'm not saying there's racism everywhere. You know, but I see it. I'm right now. I'm in the capital of the state. I'm in Montgomery, so racism is it's so so. It's more. It's more pen and pencil now than anything else, but it it still exists, you know, and you can see it, you know, when you, I live, I live in a predominantly white neighborhood. My kids go to a predominantly white school, you know, 
And but this so is, you did that so they could be the best athletes in the school, right? No, <laughs> <laughs> you will make this team. No. <laughs> My bad. Uh, <laughs> no, no. But I'm saying this is this has been my lifestyle, though. This is this is not something I did to get away from my from my people, you know, or get away from the hood. I've I've been out the hood for so long, you know. I wasn't raised in the hood. My father was in the military. We lived around the world, you know. I lived overseas and did all this stuff. I haven't when I came home. For a couple of months or during the summer or came home to visit, that's when I was in the hood. You know, other than that, I'm not a hood baby. This is, the hood is not my area. You know, and when I came home, I got treated different because I was bougie. I was stuck up because I walked different. I talked different. I didn't participate or do all the stupid shit that they did because I knew better. You know, and that wasn't for Mm -hmm. me. You know, but now that... I live in a predominantly white neighborhood, and I live out here with these people with these big fancy houses and all this money, and I don't have a lot of it. You know, all my friends and the people that I know here in this city, they look at me like, oh, you're not one of us. You you ain't supposed to be. You're supposed to be over here with us. No, fuck, I'm not supposed to be over there with y'all because I was over there with y'all. <laughs> y'all are still on my shit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not being funny. You know, I put, I work my ass off to get where I am right now. You know, I work my ass off for years. You know, I'm old as fuck. I'm not 20 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I put, I put in a lot of long hours on the road and up in the middle of the night trying to put my family in a position to where we don't have to worry about shit. You know, and when I go out and I'm like, if me and my kids are out in the front yard and my son is riding his motorcycle and my daughter's riding her bike, you know, the people that drive down my street, they still look at me funny. You know, there's not a black dude on my block. You know what I'm saying? And I get all the strange looks. My wife gets the strange When we drive through the security gate to come in the neighborhood, to come in the subdivision, the dude asks, my, asks us for our ID to see our address. And you know I live here. You know what I'm saying? And you know I live here. So, you know, even though I'm out the hood, I still get treated like I'm from the hood. You know, even though I've never been there, that's not my atmosphere. I'm not a bad person. I get treated like that because of the color of my skin. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I I give a lot of speeches. And nappy though, I hate the word nigga. I use it, but only... In certain circumstances or when I'm just chilling with my friends or when I'm just I don't make it public all the time you know what I'm saying I'm black I'm gonna use that word I can use it you know but I don't you don't you don't people y'all know me y'all know when y'all use that word on Twitter I I hit y'all up if you get it excessive I say hey y'all can calm that down a little bit you know what I'm saying and and that's just the way I feel. Even though it's our word, we can use it because it's a term of endearment, you still can go overboard and make yourself seem ignorant because you're just throwing that word out there just because. You know what I'm saying? I can understand you use it when you're chilling with your boys and y'all in the private, but in public, everybody doesn't understand the way you mean for that word to come across. You know what I'm saying? So when it's in a written text, People can take that shit and just go with it. You know, they can make any kind of assumption they want to. And usually, just like we said earlier, people go for negative more than they do the positive. So that's why I hate when people just start throwing that word out there over and over and over and over again. You can see it in in their tweets, you know. Every third word is that word, you know. Or every, in every tweet, that word is in there. Dude, stop using that. Calm it down some. It's not necessary. You know, I want to see Twit Twit's video right now. You know, <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. You don't, you don't have to use that word to get your point across. You know what I'm saying? And, and I just despise that word to a point because I've heard it so much and I've heard it used by every freaking race in the world. You know? I remember um, 
I don't want to say like a year, year and a half ago, you put up a commentary. I remember the gameplay. It was Modern Warfare 3 on um, Carbon. That was mad because I hated that fucking map. But, I remember this video. Um, I remember you did a commentary about that and racism on the internet. And you were talking about how um, a lot of people like to throw around the word. And a lot of people like to leave negative comments just for the hell of it. Like they could just not like your, your gameplay because, you know, you went 32 and 20. And they straight call you nigga this, nigga that, and all this retarded, it's low. And you're like, it's not necessary. You don't need it. And you're like, do I believe these people are racist in real life? No. They just do that because they can on the internet. Yep. Yeah, and they do. And they do it. And it's coming. I get, I get 25, 30 of those messages a day. You know, nigga, you, you think you shit because you got your own company. No. What they got to do with anything? And little kids <laughs> leave me, you just a nigga, I hate you nigga, nigga, you this, nigga that. And I'm like, dude, why? I don't even block them because I know I like for you idiots to come back. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, like to leave, I like to leave you thank yous and like that comment, thank you, come again, you know, appreciate your, <laughs> your admiration and all that shit. I'll leave y'all, I won't, I won't leave no negative comments on stuff like that because when... That's all they want is a fight. And you kill people with kindness. I say thank you and sir and please and all that. And I don't have to worry. Nine times out of ten, they won't comment no more. You know, because they, they looking to start that fight. And when you don't give it to them, they don't know what to do next. Because if that didn't upset you and piss you off to the point where you start cursing and getting out of your character, then... What else can they do? They don't know what else to do because they think that's the that's the lowest they can go to make you respond to them. But that's, in, what, that's what we were uh, <coughs> we were talking about that uh, two weeks ago with Miss Five Thousand Watts. And she, we were talking about trolls. I think Jay asked her a question like, "How do you deal with it and shit?" And they were saying if you just don't re- if you don't just if, wow if you just don't respond, goddamn if you just don't respond, you know they don't have anything to go off. They can sit there and call you a million different names and all they want, but if you don't give them a reaction, because that's the only reason they do it. That's the only reason they reaction. reaction. People yeah. do it to get a rise out of you. If they can get that reaction, they're going to come back every time. And I mean Bef- every time. And Before, I, I just uh, you got really thick skin, you can just go ahead and reply and just get them views, you know what I'm saying? But that's neither here nor there. That's because <laughs> you that's just want to make shit. to it. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> just playing. <laughs> No, before uh, before we run out of time, man, I just want to share something real quick. Um, it's it's kind of back to a topic that when uh, Snacks and Nappy kind of touched on how you, how you said Snacks, you're like one of the most hated out there or whatever. Um, I just wish I wish people got a chance to know the Snacks that I know. Um, kind of going through a rough patch right now. I'm not going to get into detail, but uh, you know, I, I, I shot Snacks a text and uh, let him know my situation and just you know kind of threw it threw it out there i just expected a text back to be honest but uh you know snacks took time took time out of his day out of his busy day and uh gave me a call man and just really like really like was there for me man i just wish people you know got to knew that side of you and 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 just like it, it, it upsets me to see like a lot of the things people say about you and i mean genuine he's just a genuine good dude man and like you know you didn't have to call me and uh, and just like you know, help me keep my head up and and uh, and keep moving and keep pushing. Gave me some great words of wisdom, and uh, I just really appreciate it, man. I just I want everybody to know that, and I wish everybody got a chance to know that side of snacks, man, because it just really upsets me sometimes to see some of the things people say about you, man. And it's it they couldn't be more wrong, and it's just people going off of you know hearing what Keemstar said or what this person said and this and that, and it's like, man, just take the time to get to know somebody, and you might be surprised and. Uh, I don't know, man. I just wanted to share that and, and just give you another thank you for that because it just really brightened my day, man. I, I needed that call and the, the story and the, you know, it was so inspirational that you gave me and it just really helped me keep moving that, that uh, yesterday, man. So I really do appreciate it. Ain't Happiness no problem, man. That's what I do. This is <clears throat> and that goes tweet, tweet. But, you know, that's, I appreciate it, man. You said it first. Uh, I appreciate the love. But, yeah, man, that's, that's, it's all a part of, Trying to make sure everybody else is okay, and that's that's part of my job, you know, and not just part of my job. You just because you work for me, you a person, you know, and I I work like I told you, I work for several different assholes, and I don't want to be that asshole, you know what I'm saying? I want I want to be a person that my 
my door is always open and even if I feel like something's wrong then I'm a, I'm gonna reach out you know and I hope I hope I did help and I hope the situation gets better but anytime man that's that's just me that's just what I do and Anybody else except for Twit Twit, y'all holler at me. <laughs> All right, Snacky Poo. All right, look here, Snacky Poo. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> on that note, people, we are pushing the time limit. We're going to uh, get back out of that hole we were in. I think that's what I said last week. We just got deep on y'all. So deep on that hole. We're going to get back in it next week. You know, we're going to have uh, another uh, African-American guest to continue Black History Month. With um, the Tuesday challenges, you guys have been loving them, enjoying them so far. So we're going to keep uh, pushing those out as well. We were supposed to do uh, dinner with the fam on Thursday nights, but we got some technicalities we got to work out before that goes up. But just keep an eye out for that. That'll be out soon. But All my Hennessy yeah. gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's time to wrap up right there. So, y'all, see this? Uh, y'all see this shit? My glass is empty. This shit is not cool. <laughs> I'm it's giving Friday. a preview of the next challenge. It's Friday night, almost 10 p.m., and my glass is empty. I'm gonna get me some gaming on and get on this yak. <laughs> Yo, Papa Molly, start sweating. <laughs> woo woo! Oh, see, there go the black jokes. <laughs> Anyways, on that note, people, I mean, uh, normally we say we out this motherfucker. See you never else, but I mean, we got. The one and only big snacks here. So take us out, snacks. Take us out, snacks. All right, damn it. We out this mother. See ya, damn it. Yo, yo. Yes. Can't get no better than that. <laughs> yeah.